Most people work for someone or a company and will sell their time for between $20 and $250 an hour. Some of us among you are making thousands an hour and spending the rest of our time on boats drinking beer. I want, I want you to understand the definition, Doug Reitmeyer's definition of a high value contract. It's not one that just makes a lot of money. It's one that takes little of your time. So write this down, high value contracts. I'm here to the workshop to, get, to learn how to get high value contracts. And I, the definition of high value contracts is one that takes very little of my time and little or none of my resources but gives me a huge cash return. And when I say a huge cash return, we're talking in terms of a thousand to a hundred thousand dollars an hour. Because what happens with contractors is, particularly for those that grew up in the business, is everybody teaches you, well, you know, we take cost plus overhead and profit, and we try and increase our profit margins, we try and cut down our overhead, and we struggle with this thing, and we fight, and that's what everybody's doing. And the problem is you got a million licensed contractors out there, and so when an opportunity does come up that you, seems to fit your trade skills, uh, it's all of a sudden you realize you're like one of the pack in the, of the wolves, one of the members of the pack of the wolves, going after a fawn or a bunny rabbit for lunch and nobody's going to get much, right? It is not going to be a huge cash return. So um, they also get trained to think in terms of, you know, I'm working for 20 to 200 hours an hour, some type in that range. I mean, most of you here, if I said, look, next week I have a project and I'd like to hire you for $150 an hour, um, it's going to take 40 hours, so about six grand in it for you. Um, how many of you would refuse that? Uh, everybody would take me up on 150 bucks an hour for 40 hours straight? Okay. So you get that idea. Now, I'm going to give you an example of a high value contract so you really get uh, drive this home in a massive way. One of the guys who went to our workshop a couple times got this new mindset and he saw where the government was advertising to bid a removal of a furnace, a heat treatment furnace. There's no make or model number. You can't take any pictures of it. You have, you have one opportunity to go make a site visit because it's on the nuclear part of the shipyard in Philadelphia. And even when you go to see there, you can't have any cell phones back in that area because it's part of the nuclear area. So it's just kind of a secret area. There is no make and model number because it was built in place 60 years ago. It's time to take it out. It's the general description is 18 feet wide, 40 feet deep, and 20 feet high. When you actually physically go there, you look at the door that goes up, weighs 10 tons, so it's got two five-ton counterweights, so they can open this door like a garage door, but it's two feet thick of iron and, and, and fireworks. Imagine a 10-ton door, right? And then it's all fire brick and steel. No asbestos, but fire brick and steel, and they use it for heat treatment, and it's time to let's take this out of here, finish it all off, and we'll create a new one in there, right? This thing's, we, we've, we've gone beyond its useful life. It's time to get out of there. Marcus, who is in Washington, who also has a home in Alaska, the phone call comes to me and says, hey, Doug, I just got a call from Shannon Lutz at the Navy shipyard. She wants to know if I'll take a contract to, heat, to demo a heat treatment furnace at the shipyard for $149,500. And I said, you know, you're asking me whether you should take it or not? He said, yeah. I said, well, you know, what can you tell me about it? He says, I have no idea. It was advertised as 100K to 250K. So typically the government will advertise a range. Now, just because the government advertised a range, don't ever put any stock in this because it's just a box they click, and if they click the wrong box, you could be totally misled. But in this case, they happened to have clicked the right box. And I said, well, on what basis did you bid this number? And he said, well, I've used up all my bonding. I'm doing a lot of work on the North Slope of Alaska. And so, because I couldn't get bonding, I was thinking I could use tripartite escrow up to 150,000 in lieu of bonding. 
And I thought, well, there might be another contractor thinking the same way I am, so I'm going to lower my bid to 149.5 on the RFQ. And you're going to learn about requests for quotes. The unique thing about a request for quote is, even though you turn in a bid, it's not a contract until you accept it. So this is what we talked about at the Wind the Storm conference. Sean said, how many jobs would you bid if you knew that you had the option of whether to take the contract or not? Remember that part of the, the, at the Wind the Storm conference? Well, this is one of those, right? So I said, so you have no idea whether it's going to cost $10,000 to do or a million dollars to do. <coughs> nope, I don't have a clue. I said, well, what do you want to do? He said, I want you to do all the work if you can figure out if we can make any money, and I'll just split the profits with you. So that was the offer. I said, okay. Uh, I happen to know the facility, and I got a pretty good idea of what I think it would take to do it. So I'll tell you what, Marcus. All you have to do is make one phone call. And, I w and you do exactly what I tell you to do. The script, right? I'm going to give you a script. You're going to call Shannon Lutz back and you're going to say exactly this. Now, if you do this, if you do what I tell you, I guarantee you at least $25,000 and you don't have to do anything except handle a couple of submittals and turn in a bill for $149,500. He said, well, can I get that in writing? I said, no, but you can turn on tape a call. Does anybody know what tape a call is? If you don't know on your resource page, write down T-A-P-E-A-C-A-L-L. I put an app on my cell phone, I can turn the app on and it begins recording the conversation, then I tie the conversation in. So we record the conversation, so we have a deal verbally. Okay, the deal is that you will call Shannon Lutz and this is what you're going to say. Hi Shannon, I really appreciate you calling me about the demo of the heat treatment furnace. If I did agree to take the contract for only $149,500, what would happen next? Is that something you would email to me and I'd have in the next 15 to 30 minutes? Or does something else have to happen first and it may be several days or a week before I get the contract? Now, do you understand that what I just said is a script? You're going to get taught powerful scripts here. There's a ton of psychology that goes into what I teach here. But this shit works, okay? So if you want to go to your script section, you just go in about 10 pages and write up at the top the word scripts, right? This is a script. If I did agree to take the contract for only X dollars, in this case 149,500, what would happen next? Is that something you would email over to me? I'd have in the next 15 to 30 minutes? Or does something else have to happen first and it may be several days or a week before I'd get the contract? Okay. So everything that I'm teaching here is how to get inside of people's heads. Because we're here for one reason, to learn how to get what? You wrote it down, I hope you did, high value what? Contract. Contracts. What's the definition of high value contract? One that takes very little of your, okay, little, little or none of your resources and gives you a $1,000, $100,000 per hour paycheck. <laughs> a, a huge amount of cash, right? That's what we're here. I'm going to show you exactly how it works by telling you exactly what happened here. And, email Doug, if you put heat treatment furnace or just put furnace in a subject line and send me an email and you put furnace in a subject line, I will send you a copy of the contract, the subcontract, the direction to proceed, you can actually see all the documents that were involved in this thing and how much money was made on it. I'll give it all to you. So you can see exactly how powerful this technique is. Now let's see what happens. He gets the contract awarded. I go fly up to Philadelphia. I've got it all set up with, uh, to meet Jimmy Johnson with Tamco Demolition. You can actually see the subcontract agreement if you send me an email about this project. And so uh, Jimmy and I are looking at this thing. I said, well, you know, how are you going to take this thing apart? He said, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a little backhoe, I mean, a little, um, uh, what's, what's a little ditch witch type machine that you can put different attachments Trackle. on? 
Yeah, but with a, with a jackhammer on it. So he's going to go inside and he's going to jackhammer out all the brick, get it out of there. And then he's got, he says, think of Jaws of Life times 100. He said, I can slice through six inches steel. He said, I will slice the steel up in two by two foot sections and, and I'll take it, put it in dumpsters out here and then I'll recycle it. So I said, well, a machine like that probably costs about $10,000 a day with the men and equipment to run it. So I'm thinking at the most probably six days. So, because he, he's saying, you know, well, you know, do you have a budget? How much money do you have to get this thing done? And so I said, well, you know, I'm thinking if, if, if it costs 60 that way, then, you know, another 10, probably in the area of 70,000. Why don't you send me a proposal? How much do you think his proposal was? 70,000. 70, okay. I got it. I'm going to go get with my project manager and either he will call you back or I'll, call, I'll get back with you, okay? But one of us will get right back with you when you need an answer by, right? That's all you got to do. Then you call me up, you tell me exactly what he said, what the conversation was, and I will either tell you what to say or I'll say, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. Did that all make sense? One more thing, Jimmy. So I'll give you 71000 but one more thing. If I follow through and get you paid fast, the job goes smooth, and everything goes exactly like I say it is. You see, because I'm a national federal contractor and I do work all over the country, sometimes subcontractors wonder what it's like to do business with me. So if I do everything I say, and I use you for a reference, and somebody calls you up and say, what's it like to do business with Doug Reitmeyer? I'm expecting you'll say he's the first contractor that actually paid me more than what I have. Do you see how powerful this stuff is? Okay. Now, how much are we getting paid? 149500 How much are we paying to get it done? So, but do you understand, how much time do you think Mark has had total in this job? By the end of the job. Probably five minutes in bidding it, right? Because he didn't, he didn't bid any, like you think of bidding a job. He didn't do any takeoff or anything. He just recognized that there might be an opportunity, he knew he could withdraw, he knew that he could just pick up the phone and call me and I'd tell him what to do, right? Or figure it out for him. And at one point, once I get this set up, I sent him an email and I, I said, uh, I need you to send a subcontract to Tamco Demolition for 71000 And I got an email back saying, well, how much more is it going to cost? I sent back my travel expenses, great business, huh? I got back three smiley faces, right? <laughs> and then later on, I called him up. I says, hey, do you like this making $18,000 an hour? Because I'm sure you didn't spend two hours on this thing. So you understand how high-value contracts work, right?